All right, so let's say you have a need of taking some video from say a laptop, computer, DVD player, what have you, uh, from one part of your room and then displaying it on a screen that's maybe a good distance away. You may be tempted to just go and grab a really long HDMI cable uh, to do that job. And up to a certain point, this probably is the right answer. But that certain point is usually somewhere in the 50 to 75 foot range. Now you can buy, um, and people will sell you HDMI cables longer than that, but that is actually exceeding the standards and the best practices of how these cables really should be used. HDMI is a very high bandwidth standard. HDMI 2.0 HDMI 2.0 um, actually has a, a bandwidth of 18 gigabits a second, which is really, really fast, which makes sense because video is really, really big. Um, and usually by the time you get to the HDMI, um, that physical connection between the thing with the video and the thing showing it, you're dealing with uncompressed video at that point, uh, which means that the data being transferred is a whole lot. Now, the challenge comes is that cables can usually do one of two things well. They can move a lot of data or they can move the data far. HDMI uh, as a standard was always written to do shorter lengths between components that are physically close together. Think like your DVD player in your home and your TV in your home. They're not that far apart. So the standard and the cables are really set up to move large quantity of the data short distances, which is why cables like this get really unreliable um, when you take them past, say, 50 and especially 75 feet. But often, most of us have a need for doing that, especially if we have large spaces. In our space here, uh, the place where our computer is that runs the presentation software is a good bit away from where the screens up front are that the people actually look at. So while you can try uh, to run a long HDMI cable, it is not always and usually isn't the best way to do it. The way to do it that we have today um, to do that is actually to use a bridge in between your HDMI. So in my setup here, um, what I have is I've got my HDMI source. In this case, it's a camera, um, a PTZ camera that you might use for live streaming. Um, and we're using the HDMI out on it. So it is an HDMI signal and it is coming through here. And then it is going to our transmitter box which is actually converting that signal um, into a different standard that is then transmissible over CAT6 or CAT7 Ethernet cable. So this is the kind of cable that you are used to seeing um, for your wired network applications. It can transfer the signal over that and then get to the receiver where it's then converted back to HDMI um, and then goes to our screen. So you can see we have our screen here with our live camera signal um, you know, coming into it um, and it all just works. As far as the camera goes, it's sending HDMI. As far as the TV goes, it's receiving HDMI. Everything is happy and this bridge sits in the middle. Now, this length here isn't too bad. This is all added up um, probably about 15 feet, something that HDMI itself would have no problem doing. What this allows you to do though, is greatly extend this distance in the middle, the Ethernet run. And so to show that to you, I have this. This is 200 feet of Cat6 cable. Um, just like you would buy, um, you know, just bought it off of Amazon. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna unplug this, take this short run of cable out. Um, as you can see, I've lost my signal. And then I'm going to plug this 200 feet of cable exactly where the old one was before. So now what we have is an HDMI run to my transmitter, 200 feet of cable, it's all coiled up. You could string it out, um, obviously put it wherever you need to, run it through your ceiling, whatever you need to do, into the receiver, and what do you know? It still just works. Um, and this is one of those amazing systems that does just sort of work. Um, so you can build the system where you need it, you can stash these boxes um, wherever you might need to stash them, um, and then quite honestly, forget about it. Um, as long as it's got power and these two here run off of five volts, um, it's all just going to be there and it's all going to work 
reliably. Now, the secret to deploying a system like this um, are pretty basic. One is you want these runs um, of HDMI to be a reasonable length. If you can get them 10 feet or less um, on either side, uh, that would be a good thing. You could probably go a little further um, if you wanted to, but to keep it nice and reliable, you know, the shorter run you can do there, um, the better. This in the middle um, needs to be a high quality cable, first and foremost. You need to be running typically um, at least the CAT6 or CAT7 standard. So Ethernet cable, while it all looks the same, um, has different category standards. And that talks about the quality of the cable, the amount of data that can be transmitted over it. And these, this unit here specifically requires CAT6 or above. Um, some will work down to say something is as low as CAT5e. Um, um, most will not run on something like simple Cat5. Uh, so you're better off just getting as nice a cable as you can. The price difference between Cat6 and Cat5e or even Cat7 is pretty minimal. Um, so go ahead and, and get the most. So that's one thing you want is you want a high quality cable. The other thing you want is an uninterrupted cable. As you can see, this is factory um, end to factory end um, or you know dedicated ends cable, no interruptions in between. You may be tempted along the way uh, to use like one of these like little junction boxes to put like two runs of cable together. Uh, the more of this sort of stuff that you introduce, the more connections that you introduce, these are uh, an opportunity for your signal to get degraded um, and for the amount of total bandwidth that can go through there um, to be limited. Um, if you start doing too much of that, uh, then quite frankly, it's not gonna get the signal it needs. This is of course, all digital, which the thing about digital is it's sort of all or nothing, right? It either gets all the video it needs or it doesn't. So it either works or it's a black screen. Um, that tends to be uh, how this works. If you run an HDMI cable um, that frankly longer than you should, you're not gonna get a fuzzy signal, you're just gonna get no signal. Uh, most of these systems uh, where you're running it over the, the Cat5, or I mean, I'm sorry, the Cat6 or higher, uh, max out are somewhere around 300 to 300 feet, 350 feet. So if you want more than 300 to 350 feet, um, you're gonna have to start looking at different solutions or daisy chaining several of these together. The other really cool option though with something like this is they do have units that take a single HDMI source in and then there's actually a built-in um, Ethernet style hub uh, as part of it. We run one of these here uh, and then you can have multiple receivers on the other end. So if you have a video source, um, say your presentation uh, from your computer um, and you have multiple screens around your space that you want to display uh, that presentation, you can use one of those setups uh, to take a single HDMI in um, and then have multiple receivers on the other end receiving that signal. They're all gonna receive the exact same signal. Um, so if it's gonna be 1080p or 4K or whatever it is, they're all gonna get exactly the same. So the receiving units um, screens have to be able to receive that. But if you're using kind of standard off the shelf displays or projectors, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, but the nice thing is you can have one transmitting unit um, and you can have uh, with some of these systems four or even eight receiving units all receiving the same thing. And what you need to run between them is this CAT6, CAT7 cable. So this is how you correctly um, take an HDMI signal um, and move it great distances. Again, I would really hesitate to ever run um, HDMI 75 feet or any further than that. Um, it may work for a time, but if anything happens, if anything gets degraded, if one of the ends gets a little bad, um, you're just gonna, it's just gonna stop working one day and it's not going to be the most reliable service. And since oftentimes when you need to go that far, you're running cable through a ceiling, you're running cable, you know, into a wall, you know, or whatever, um, run the right cable. Look for um, you know a system like this, and there will be links um, down uh, in the description of this video um, to a couple of different options that we've used here at the church um, that we've actually put into practice that we've been using now for a couple of years with no issues. Uh, and if you need this kind of solution where you're moving video great distances, either from a camera like into your uh, you know live stream box, or from like say your computer uh, to a screen for display, um, any kind of distance greater than say 50 feet. This is the way you want to go.
All right. Well, I hope that this was helpful and useful to you. Thank you for tuning in. Please uh, obviously like and subscribe. And until I see you again, thank you for joining me. Hey everybody, if you found that video helpful, please hit like and subscribe and also check the video description for links to any products you've seen in today's videos. Doing that really helps support this channel. Also, don't forget to leave a comment with any questions that you may have. A lot of the content I do is based directly on the questions and the feedback you give. So keep that coming and I will keep making them. Thank you.